Welcome to this video lecture about scientific research information systems. Um, this set of video lectures is basically about the book with the same name, Scientific Research and Information Systems, published by Springer in its second edition in 2021. In this particular set of video lectures, we will discuss mixed methods as a genre of research prevalent in information systems. And in this particular first video lecture, we will discuss principles, purposes, aims, and design of mixed method inquiries. Mixed, with mixed, mixed methods, we mean inquiries, research studies that feature the sequential or concurrent combination of methods for data collection and analysis. So the idea here is that you carry out research not with one method, but with two or more research methods in some form of combination. Now, historically, mixed methods was a term that used to describe a combination of qualitative and quantitative methods, either in sequence, qual-quant or quant-qual, or in parallel in some sort of way. Um, but of course, now that we've also have other research genres, we've discussed design methods, we've discussed computational methods. Um, and of course, as you know, we have different forms of quantitative and or qualitative methods, survey experiments interviews, case studies, and so forth, um, you can think about mixing of methods in different combinations. So for example, there are now uh, studies that are case study with computational methods, or you can think about an experiment followed by design or the other way around and so forth, right? So the mixing of methods is not bound to quantitative or qualitative traditions. The reasons why we pursue mixing methods are basically one of three. First of all, we might want to strengthen the inference by basically looking at the same phenomenon using different methods, trying to reach the same conclusions, then the inference that we draw from all these different studies is strengthened. A second reason might be that we pursue or seek a greater diversity of views. Quantitative, qualitative design, computational method, they all have different particularities, different ways of looking at the world. They all use different types of data. They all have a different focus, numbers, text, artifacts, traces. Um, and so by looking at a phenomenon using a combination of these different foci, we get a greater diversity of views. Um, a third reason might be that we pursue different aims in our research to begin with. You remember from research design that we typically have aims of rationalization, exploration, or validation. And of course, different research methods have different strengths. Say, qualitative methods are very good for observation and exploration. Quantitative methods are good for rationalization and validation. And by combining them, we can basically pursue several of these aims simultaneously. So for example, we could generate and verify or can validate and regenerate theory at the same time. Um, in a very nutshell, the reason typically why we use mixed methods is that we want to offset the weakness that every one research method has by using a strength of a different research method that complements this weakness, right? So one example would be that, you know, qualitative research has a strength of being um, flex style, ho holistic and diverse, while quantitative methods have advantages of precision, yeah, and uh, but not of holism, right? So you could use a quantita qualitative methods to offset the weakness of another say use quantitative because it's precise and use qualitative because it's particularly diverse and holistic. Um, and of course, mixing methods this way would allow you to gain deeper insights in the phenomenon that any one method could do alone. Um, how do we design such a study? The key decision in mixing methods is that of timing. Do we pursue multiple methods in parallel? or we do pursue them in sequence, right? So what is the temporal ordering of the phases which these different methods are carried out? Sequential means one after another. First qual, then quant, first quant, then qual, and so forth. Parallel means both are separate, but concurrently. Concur conversion means that we take one method, collect data this way, and convert this data to fit the format of a different research method. So for example, you could take a qualitative study, uh, do a bunch of interviews, and then in analysis, you convert this interview, this text data into numbers, into numerical formats. For example, by rating each response that you get on a scale from one to 10. And then of course, these quantitative data, they can look at using quantitative methods, say statistics. That would be a conversion design. 
Uh, a third example is fully integrated, where basically you do all at once and let everything you know, influence everything else. On the right-hand side, you see a notation uh, for mixed method design that are from a, from a book by Tasha Corey and Tedley, who are two um, of the authorities on mixed methods, and they've written papers and, and books on mixed method design. And these are the, 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 the notation that they use, um, where you see how they you know, draw up the different designs of research, uh, um, of, of mixed method research designs. Um, now we have reasons for doing um, mixed methods and I've explained this, but we also typically have different purposes or aims. Um, now there's a range of them. For example, the paper that's mentioned at the bottom here lists, I believe eight or nine of them. But I personally think there are four main purposes for doing, um, for what mixed methods tries to achieve. The first purpose might be one of triangulation. Triangulation means that you use different methods to have converging and cooperative results from different methods and designs, right? We study one phenomenon with multiple angles and we hope through triangulation of different methods, different ways of looking at this phenomenon that we have converging results. Basically the same picture emerges irrespective of the method that we use to investigate the phenomenon. Right, so the idea here would be to strengthen an inference by showing that irrespective of the methods, we always get the same outcome, so to speak. A very different purpose is that the purpose of complementarity. What we do in complementarity is that we try to use one method to enhance, illustrate, elaborate, or clarify the results we got from another method. An example here would be that you carry out an experiment um, and you get results, uh, but you don't understand why you got these results. And then you can use a qualitative study, say uh, interviews with the participants of the experiments to illustrate, enhance, elaborate, or clarify the experimental results of the task they carried out. That would be a good example of complementarity, right? So the idea would be not be to co corroborate and triangulate the results, but rather to complement by elaborating, explaining, illustrating, clarifying the results. A third distinct purpose is initiation. What we mean here is that we do one study and we find perhaps a paradox, a contradiction, something unexpected that then becomes the basis for a subsequent study that is being initiated on the basis of the first studies that we carried out. Yeah. So here an example would be that you do carry out an experiment and you get a very paradoxical, completely unexpected finding. You expected one thing and you got the exact opposite side and you have no idea why this occurred. Um, and then you carry out an exploratory, perhaps a qualitative study, um, maybe observant study, maybe a field study, something else to figure out why you got the results that you got in the first place. This is an initiation. We're not elaborating, and, but really we are reframing the research question based on something that was contradictory or paradoxical or otherwise unexpected. And the fourth purpose is that you um, use one research methods to help set up the other research method, right? We reform the research design through one method for a different method. A classic example here would be that you do, for example, what's called a success factor study, a study that you try to figure out what are the important factors to consider in a particular phenomenon, say in a um, digital transformation of a firm, what are the things that lead to success of such an initiative? Um, and you could study this qualitatively, explore a range of success factors, and you get a list of, say, 20 of them. And then you use these to then measure them quantitatively, say, through a survey to figure out which of these 20 uh, factors that you identified are the most important ones or the least important ones and so forth. This would be a development purpose of mixing methods. So triangulation, complementarity, initiation, development, in my view, are the four main purposes of mixing methods. Now, aside from timing and purpose, we have other design decisions that we have to make in mixing methods. Now, keep in mind that these design decisions are on top of the research design decisions we have to make within each method alone. So here I'm only talking about the research design decisions that apply to the mixing of the methods, not to the decisions within each of the methods, say how you set up the qualitative study or the design study or whatever else. So sequencing is the question of timing, whether or not it's run in parallel, integrated, concurrently, sequentially. Weighing means the question is whether or not these different methods that you're using are of equal status 
or whether one dominates the other. Yeah, so how important is each of the different methods? Is one the dominant method? Say the experiment is really the key thing and the follow-up interviews are sort of, you know, on top of that. Or if you do case study and survey, maybe both of them are equal. That is something to be decided. Mixing is a question of whether you're mixing one method, a mono method mixing, right? So uh, meaning that you do two different types of case studies or, you know, like two different forms of qualitative methods um, or fully mixed methods, which basically means you really take methods from different genres, quantitative, qualitative, design, and, and computational. And pricing is related to sequencing. We saw this in this notation by Tasha Curry and Tedley. The question is, where do you mix? Do you mix on basis of the research question and then you carry out one study with data generation, collection analysis, processing in one tradition, another one, or for example, doing data collection or doing data analysis. Uh, I've shown you this conversion mixed method design where you collect data in one tradition, say qualitatively, and then you convert that for data analysis using a different method. So here the pricing of the mixing is doing analysis, not already with the research question or doing data collection. Now, in wrapping up, there are a few particularities in top of these different design decisions. So one of the particularities that you encounter when doing mixed methods are is data transformation. When you use different methods for analysis of data, whether or not they've been collected through one method or multiple methods, you need to transform them, right? So for example, qualitative data has to be transformed into numbers, or maybe numbers have to be transformed into, into text and so forth. Um, that you usually need in concurrent conversion or integration mixed method research, not necessarily in sequential methods, right? So here we need to make sure that, of course, these transformations are reliable and valid, yeah? Um, so what is the particularity if you consider qualitative data, say codes or text or snippets that you count, that you quantify, for example, by counting the frequency of how often this code occurs or by rating a statement, uh, you know, on a scale, Say, for example, you ask people how good the, the lecture was and they tell you pretty good, damn good, not so good, boring and so forth. And then you, you convert that into ratings on a scale from one to 10, where one is very bad to 10. What you're effectively doing here is you're losing information. Yeah, because qualitative codes, expressions are richer than any numbers, or let's say on a scale from one to 10 would be. So here you have to accept information loss. The other way, quantitative data conversion to qualified, qualified data, say you're annotating a number by qualifying it through text. So let's say a rating of uh, the lecture as a three out of 10, you can say that it was you know, relatively boring or something like this. That is very difficult to do because you're basically trying to enrich uh, data with more information that you don't actually have, right? So these particularities occur during data transformation. A second issue that appears in mixing is um, that you have to find a way of comparing the data that you collected or analyzed through different methods. So if you, let's say you get um, in, your, in our lecture evaluation example, where we do have mixing of methods, so to speak, because we have a numerical scores uh, for a lecture on a scale from one to five usually, and you also get free text comments, right? And what typically what I really try to do is then correlate what you write in the text with the numbers you've given me, right? And then you sometimes have oddities that people score a, a course very well, 4.5 on a five point scale, but they say a lot of negative things in the comments. And then you think, like, well, how can that be? How can you think the course is good, but tell me all these negative things, right? So data correlation very often requires further analysis and digging, figuring out why there is inconsistencies between data that should, but does not actually correlate. Yeah, and there's different ways of doing this. One way would be that you have a data matrix that that basically positions each piece of data on a quantitative and a qualitative axis to see where they correspond, don't correspond, um, correlate, don't correlate. You know, are similar, not similar, and so forth. And the third and final um, uh, particularity of mixing methods is what is called legitimization, which in this case doesn't mean um, the the steps you undertake to ensure the quality of research within each of the methods themselves, right? So reliability and validity of your quantitative part, say, and your qualitative part. But instead, it means the legitimization of what is called the meta-inference. The inference you draw 
from the mixing of the individual method. So where you try to synthesize what you've learned from the multiple methods that you've combined, that you've mixed in your study, right? So that is called a meta inference, an inference across all the different individual method uh, parts. And that of course, screws has to be valid, right? So, and the quality of these meta inferences, of course, depend on the strength of the inference that you got from each of the individual methods. And of course, then these methods, if you these inferences, these individual findings, if you put them together, they can be divergent, convergent, complementary, um, you know, or some other aspect. They could be contradictory. So, for example, they could be corroborating each other. Whatever the outcome is, each of them requires a legitimization, right? A an explanation, a justification of why you draw that particular meta inference. In a convergent aspect, when they both tell exactly the same story, this legitimization might be easy, but of course it's particularly hard if it's divergent. If what study A says it's A and study B says it's B, explaining that and justifying that can be very difficult. And this brings us to the end of this explanation of the of this introduction to mixed methods um, in information systems research. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening.